Joining us now for more on this story is France 24's International Affairs Editor, Rob Parsons. Hello there, Rob. Hello. A lot of the news that we're getting is coming out of the capital. Yeah. Uh, but the fighting has spread across Sudan, and especially in Darfur, which, as yeah. our viewers know, has its own long, difficult history. Uh, what can you tell us about the situation there? Well, you know... The <laughs> It feels a little bit like another day, another ceasefire in Sudan. Every day there's a ceasefire announced and then it's almost immediately broken. But in Western Sudan, in the province of Darfur in particular, uh, the ceasefire never seems to have held at all. And over the last few days, the violence has been particularly bad uh, around the town of El Junaina in particular, uh, where over three days of fighting, some, somewhere in the region, 200, uh, 200 people are believed to have died, uh, many more than that wounded. And, and what people are concerned about, uh, and the United Nations Human Rights Commission has been talking about this in the, in the last few hours, is that... This could very quickly spread into inter-ethnic violence uh, in Darfur and take off in the way it took off in the, in the 2000s when 300,000 people were killed in the fighting then and millions forced from their homes. That would be an absolute catastrophe, you know, all because of the, the naked ambitions of two generals in Khartoum who are fighting for nothing more than, the, than, than their own personal ambitions and naked power. Uh, on the backs of, of, of the people of, of their country. Uh, and in Darfur at the moment, the situation is becoming particularly bad. Already there are signs that this is beginning to, to, to take on an inter-ethnic uh, appearance with attacks from one, eth inter -eth one ethnic group on the, on the other. Is that because if, of fighting over resources? Well, in partly that. It's in part, too, because uh, militia, local militias, which have allegiance to particular ethnicities, feel empowered now by the chaos that's taking over the country uh, and encouraged, in some cases, in, in Darfur, by the Rapid Support Forces. Remember that the Rapid Support Forces had their origin in Darfur with the Janjaweed militia accused of genocide in Darfur uh, during the 2000s. Uh, and they seem to be picking up where they left off. Uh, and the concern, I think, of, of everybody who's trying to have some sort of effect on what's happening is that very soon it will spiral out of control. Now, there does not seem to be a lot of progress being made on getting these two sides, getting these two generals uh, to negotiate. But who are the main entities that are trying to work out a resolution? And what are their motivations? Well, you know, every, everybody <laughs> has got a different motivation, I think. Of, of, the, the big powers, obviously, are playing a part in this. The United States has been trying without any success so far, but from the occasional ceasefires, uh, despite the efforts of the State Department, Anthony Blinken, uh, it's not really going anywhere. Saudi Arabia is also involved. Uh, it's got interests in the region. Egypt, a major player in the region, very closely linked with the Sudanese armed forces, and Al Borhan, the general uh, who was trained as an officer in Egypt himself, uh, and is quite close to Al Sisi, the president of, uh, of Egypt. Uh, but other than that, you know, we've heard that uh, Al Borhan has been talking to the leaders of Ethiopia, uh, of Chad, and South Sudan, countries which border. Uh, Sudan, obviously anxious that the, the, the violence that's beginning to spread inside Sudan shouldn't get out of control uh, and then spread to their own countries, and you know, either through refugees or through violence. Uh, according to Al-Burhan, he's also been talking to officials in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Uh, and among the things apparently that they've been talking about is making a transition, transition to that transitional civilian government again. In other words, there's a suggestion there that uh, in Saudi Arabia, and particularly the United Arab Emirates, which has had quite close links with the rapid support forces over the last couple of years, uh, that they're beginning to think that really there is no future in military control in Sudan anymore. The accent really has to be on the transfer of power uh, to the, the civilian authorities as quickly as possible. For the, the, the part of Hameti, the leader of the Rapid Support Forces, he says he's talking to people outside of the country as well. He mentioned uh, the United Arab Emirates in particular. But, you know, at the moment, uh, despite all the talk on the ground, Nothing is being achieved. Mm, it doesn't seem like either side plans to give an inch. France 24's international affairs editor Rob Parsons, thanks so much for your analysis.